Have you been asked to create a horizontal model of various transactions and accounting and you're not quite sure what to do? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm Professor Capco and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in today's video. But first I want to say I believe something awesome is just about to happen to you. So keep your eye out for it. And now back to the video. In this video, I'm going to cover uh, how to use the horizontal model of accounting to track various transactions. And I've got a list of eight transactions here that we're going to use as an example. And we're going to get into that in a moment, but I just want to go over a couple things to start with. First of all, we have the fundamental accounting equation. The assets must equal the liabilities plus the equity. This equity could be called shareholders equity, stockholders equity. It's equity. All right, so it's the equity in the company. These two added together is equal to the assets. If you need a primer on the accounting equation, I've got a link up here in the corner that you can click on and get a good start on that. All right, so we've got some of the more useful accounts here listed. This is not all accounts that are possible. This is just by way of example. And we've got some here that are listed that are at cash, accounts receivable, inventory, and equipment. One thing that could be said about all of these here is that they are assets. These are assets. And we have an equal sign here, and that's the same equal sign here. And on this side, we've got notes payable, accounts payable. Those are two examples of liabilities. So I'm going to look at those as liabilities. And we're going to add, and there's another addition sign, and all these are added. We have the equal sign. We have paid in capital and retained earnings. Those are equity. And part of that is revenues minus expenses and your revenues minus expenses will then go into retained earnings so that's all part of equity so you've got the equal sign here any transactions on the left hand side have to be balanced out with transactions on the right hand side and you could do that two different ways we could add something to the left side and add an equal amount to the right hand side or for example we could add a certain amount to the left hand side and at the same time subtract an equal amount from the left hand side and it would remain in balance likewise for the the right hand side but basically we this is our fulcrum our lever we want to remain in balance both sides let's look at these transactions i've got eight example transactions to work with and we'll start with these thank you for that thumbs up that's really helpful to the channel I really appreciate it. So the first one says that the company is organized and stockholders invest cash of $50,000. So cash is being invested. So let's take a look at how we do that. So there's an increase in cash and we're looking at transaction one. So we're looking at this particular row. Cash is going to increase by 50,000. So I'm gonna put that as a positive 50,000. So if we just did nothing else, our, our balance would be off. It would be too much on the left-hand side, not enough on the right-hand side. But because it's stockholders and they're investing in the company, they're basically putting money into the company to start it out with, and they're probably getting shares of stock in exchange for that. That's called paid-in capital. So I'm going to increase the paid-in capital, which is an equity account, by $50,000. So we got 50,000 on the left side of the equal sign and 50,000 on the right side of the equal sign. Our first transaction is done and it's in balance. Let's look at the next one. We're gonna look at transaction number two. Transaction number two says the company borrows $10,000 from the bank and signs a short-term note. So they're now going to get some debt. 
and they're borrowing ten thousand dollars so that means the first thing we're going to look at is our cash is going to increase by ten thousand dollars so we're in the row two here our cash is going to increase by ten thousand dollars and again it's out of balance unless we change something on the right hand side and they're borrowing it from the bank and signing a short-term note. A short a note is an evidence of a loan, so that's a liability. And so I'm going to look at notes payable, and I'm going to increase that by $10,000 because this is a liability. The liabilities have gone up by $10,000. This company owes $10,000, and again, it remains in balance. So I can I could even make this line a little bit heavier. I'll put my blue to show the demarcation between the two that we want to remain in balance. All right, transaction number two is done. The next one is $15,000 of equipment is purchased for cash. Okay, so we have cash. Let's look at the cash part of it. I always like to look at cash first if it's available. Cash is going down by $15,000 because they're paying cash for something. So we're going to subtract $15,000 from our cash account. That's an asset, so it's going to have too much weight on this side. It's out of balance, but we can change it by adding to our equipment account. Our equipment account is also an asset account and it's increasing by 15,000 because that's the equipment we bought. So basically we're exchanging one asset for another, 15,000 reduced cash, but our equipment went up by 15,000. So our line number three, our row number three remains in balance and that transaction's done. So far so good. If you do have questions or want to have a particular video created, consider becoming a member members questions get priority and you can also request a video as a member and i will try and get the member videos made first you can become a member by clicking the join button it's next to the subscribe button and there are various options there with increasing perks so take a look at that and you can support the channel by doing that all right so i'm going to move this up a little bit and we're going to now do transaction number four First month's rent of $5,000 is paid. So they're paying in cash. There's nothing to indicate otherwise. So we're going to decrease our cash by $5,000. But that is not a liability. There's no asset there. They just get to stay where they're at. And so that is an expense. And our expense is actually increasing by 5,000. So it's going to be a plus 5,000 here, plus 5,000. We add our expenses together to see how much they are. And you're gonna say, wait a minute, Professor Capco, I'm subtracting on this side 5,000 and I'm adding it on this side. Isn't that out of balance? No, because if you re recall, we do have an, a subtraction or a negative sign here. So we're gonna subtract. The 5,000. If I were to put this as a negative 5,000 and I've got a negative here, I'd be a negative of a negative, which is a double negative, which becomes a positive. But we're subtracting a positive number so that reduces our revenues. There's, I've got other videos on how to figure out net income. You may want to take a look at one of those, but that's basically what we're doing here. All right, so transaction number four is complete. Number five. Inventory was purchased for $30,000. $20,000 is paid in cash with the balance due in 30 days. So we've got two things going on here. We're purchasing inventory by an amount of $30,000. So that's the cost of inventory. So I'm going to look at my inventory column and I'm going to increase it by $30,000. We paid $20,000 of it in cash. So our cash is going to go down by 20,000. So I subtract $20,000 from here. So it's still not quite in balance because there's still a balance due. If we 
if the inventory cost thirty thousand and we paid twenty thousand, that means ten thousand dollars is still owed. That's an account payable. That's a liability, and it's account payable of ten thousand dollars. I'm going to put it right here. That's an increase in that account payable, and so our transactions still in balance. We've got thirty thousand dollars added here. We subtracted out twenty thousand, so there's an increase in assets of ten thousand, and we're increasing our liability by ten thousand as well. So transaction number five is complete. Let's take a look at number six. Merchandise costing three thousand dollars is sold for ten thousand dollars cash. All right, so we have multiple things going on here. So let's deal first with the sale. We're selling something for $10,000 cash. So transaction number six, the first part of it is we're going to increase our cash by $10,000 because that's the amount we're receiving. It's an asset, so I increase it by $10,000. It's revenue because it's a, we sold something, so I'm going to increase my revenues by $10,000. Revenues, by the way, are an income statement account. If you're not sure if something's an asset or if it's a balance sheet item or an income statement item or whatever, I've got some videos, one of which is up here, that will help you with it. All right, the next thing that I have is the rest of this transaction. We've only done part of it. We also need to know that our merchandise costs $3,000. So we didn't sell something that costs nothing. $3,000 is what that bit of merchandise cost us and we sold it at a profit for $10,000. So we need to subtract out that $3,000 from our inventory. So our inventory is going to be reduced, not by 10,000, but by 3,000, because that's the amount of cost for that particular item or set of items that we sold. So I'm decreasing inventory by that amount. I'm also going to have that as a cost of goods sold. So I'm going to increase my expenses. Cost of goods sold is an expense. Increase it by $3,000. And subtracting the $3,000 from the revenue amount, which will show us that this revenue is $7,000. So that's how we would deal with transaction number six. Let's move this up just a little bit. Well, I don't actually don't have to move it up any further. I can look at number seven. Advertising costing $1,000 is purchased. It will be paid next month. So we are not paying for it now, but it's an expense. We have to expense it now, and in the future, we're actually going to pay it. So it's a expense of $1,000. So I'm going to write plus $1,000 here because we're expensing it today. It's an expense, and again, our expenses get added up over time. And we didn't pay it in cash, so the cash doesn't get reduced, but we do increase our notes, our accounts payable. It's an account payable, so I'm going to add to that $1,000 here. And again, this is another situation where on one side of the equal sign, I'm adding $1,000 to the accounts payable, but I'm subtracting, remember there's a subtraction sign here, I'm subtracting $1,000 here because that's an expense. So far, so good? All right, so that's row seven and our last row, company paid the balance due in transaction five. So if we recall in transaction five, we had purchased $30,000 worth of inventory. We paid 20,000 up front and the remainder was due in 30 days. The remainder of course was $10,000. That was the accounts payable up here in five. We're going to pay that off. So we reduce our cash by $10,000 because we're paying it out. So I'm reducing $10,000 here, and I also reduce my accounts payable because I don't owe it anymore. So I reduce that by $10,000. So that is the last part of transaction eight. So you can see there, that is how you use the horizontal model to show all these transactions. These transactions have all remained in balance, and that is typically how that is done. Now. A lot of times an accountant will do this in a format like this, but this is a good format for learning how to approach this type of problem. 
That is all I have for you today. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, I would love for you to subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you.